Jason Whitlock, he uh, used to work at ESPN, used to work at Fox Sports. Now he does his own thing. He has a show on YouTube called uh, Fearless, Fearless with Jason Whitlock. He had some interesting, interesting points about Coach Prime in a, in a couple of rants, a couple of different rants where he rips Prime on his show Fearless in his latest episode. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it after the bumper. Stay tuned. What's going on, everybody? What is going on, everybody? My name is Jeff Lightsey Jr. This is the Victor Formation Sports Show right here on Jeff Lightsey Jr. YouTube, Facebook, wherever you get your content. Do me a favor, hit that thumbs up button, like, share, subscribe, and the notification bell because I upload all the time. Now, Jason Whitlock, a veteran reporter, Jason Whitlock. He's He's been doing this thing for a long time uh, on some major networks for a while. Uh, he rips Deion Sanders. Like, he just let him have it. And Whitlock has kind of been building up towards this for a while. Uh, just to kind of give you some context, Whitlock in, uh, you know, a week back, week or two back, maybe a couple of weeks back, he's he's good friends with actually with Brett Favre and Warren Sapp, two guys that are actually really tight with Prime. And Whitlock would tell those guys to their face or in debates or whatever. He's like, y'all don't like what Deion's doing. I think so, I, I like some of the things that he's doing, but some of the things – I'm not so I'm not fond of, but nothing like what he did in his one of his more recent episodes of his show on Fearless. Let me just I'm gonna just go to the clip. I'm gonna let you hear it from him. Here is Jason Whitlock talking about Coach Prime, Deion Sanders, and and what he's doing at Colorado and how he feels that Prime is putting a target on his players' back. Now, this is fair use, YouTube, fair use, fair use. This is commentary, so don't want to get no copyright strike. But let's take a listen. Let me go to the extra point, the extra layer of this. Now, just for some context, let me see if I can zoom in on this. Whitlock, whoa, that is not what I'm trying to do. Whitlock, get off of here. In this video, there is a picture of Roy Johnson, the head coach of Bishop Sycamore. That's in the, in the title says Coach Scam. <laughs> This is what Whitlock. This is what Whitlock does. He does a lot of like hot take, almost clickbait type content. That's Roy Johnson compared Deion Sanders to Mike Shashesky and Roy Johnson, and has them not coach prime coach scam. Now let's listen. Deion put a target on his team's back. Everything Deion has been doing has been putting a target. Oh, oh, don't mess up on me now. On his yeah. team's back. Dion has been running out, and I'm talking about since February, when he held the team meeting and told, or January, whenever he went to Colorado and held the team meeting and told everybody, uh, hit the transfer portal. Now, part of this I kind of believe, because I've talked, to, I've talked to my own friends. I've played competitive sports. I understand. When you have that much flash and flamboyancy, you are kind of putting a target on your team's back, right? When you call out another man like that, Coach Norvell, those players went to Colorado State to play for him. So they're going to have his back just like, you know, Jackson, not Jackson State, you know, just like Colorado has Prime's back. So he's, he's kind of making a point there. Transfer portal stuff, huh? not so much. I'm not I'm not really agreeing with it. But, but he's got a point there as far as putting a target on your back. You, you do subjugate yourself to that. Let's keep listening. I'm bringing Louis Vuitton here. <laughs> I, I want four and five star kids here. I want the best here. Ain't nothing wrong with when that. Dion did that. It's nothing wrong with that. That's the process of putting a target. Nah, that on part your ain't. Teams back. When no. Dion came out week one after beating TCU and saying, "Oh, I'm about to get comfortable up in here," and nothing everybody's wrong threatening, and frustrated, a black coach leaving us leading the locker room with 75% black players. Dion racialized this whole thing. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. That's that's none of that. Like that part, cut it out, Whitlock. Cut it, cut it out. He didn't racialize. It's, it's just the fact that there aren't many black head coaches at the Power 5 level. That's just a fact. 
That's that he didn't make that the fact. That's just what it is. I can literally name them. They just one just got fired, Mel Tucker. So it ain't that many. It's like Franklin, Dion. Yeah, we started to get low. <laughs> it started to get real, real low after that. James Franklin at Pitt State. Dion, uh, we've done this exercise before. Mel Tucker just got fired, so he's not one. You get what I'm saying? Uh, dude at Notre Dame, Marcus Freeman. Uh, man, we started to get real low. There's a whole lot of jobs out there. So Dion didn't racialize it. College football racialized it by not hiring any black coaches. And put a target on his team's back. And so if you're wondering why Henry Blackburn and those white offensive linemen and ended up the, the black defensive end for Colorado State, all these guys that got all these unsportsmanlike conduct penalties trying to take little cheap shots at Colorado, where's that animus coming from? Again, mm. I've seen this a million times. Now, besides the race part, he was wrong on that part. Besides that, now this, he might have a point with this. He might actually have a point. He brings up a, a kind of a good, good analogy. Besides the race part, though, I'm still not, I'm still not feeling that. I've seen poor, working class, disrespected black kids go compete against the entitled, privileged, well-funded white kids and do exactly that. Oh, you think you better than us. Mm. You think we ain't nothing. Now, this is you interesting. Think we're beneath you. This is interesting. I'll show you. Seen it a million times. I've been one of them kids. Now, that part is true. That that part I don't disagree with. Uh, when you have <laughs> Shadour Sanders after the game showing off a diamond watch and diamond chains and different things like that, People will take that to heart. Like, oh, you think you're better than me. You have Shadour and different people on Colorado calling folks broke and kind of antagonizing them like that. He kind of makes a point there. The whole racial ass, that, that's stupid. I don't I don't believe that because most of both teams were all poor black people. You know what I'm saying? It just happened to be the white safety that hit Travis. But the whole flamboyant, braggadocious attitude, uh, some, when you playing another team, they're not going to be feeling that. That part is true. And so now you can't see it because you're so blinded by your racial idolatry, Ooh, racism, boo. that you boo. can't see that Dion has done this to white kids boo. and to all the teams. You want Jay Norville's black, his black defensive coordinator. Yes. All the, they all fed into that energy that Dion has put out there that he's better than everybody else. Now this is my the true. greatest thing to ever hit coaching. He and his team, everybody's beneath us. That might be everybody's true. Now, this might be true. Comfortable with us. The entire Colorado State team, starting with their black head coach, starting with their black defensive coordinator, they hit Boulder, Colorado with a chip on their shoulder and an yeah. attitude and told them kids in their locker room, black and white, these guys think you're beneath them. Now, this is and true. So they took that field with that attitude and they took their shots. Absolutely. Just like I said, anybody. Absolutely. Now, <clears throat> to that point, absolutely right. 100% correct. 100% correct. He's 100% correct on that. They they had a chip on their shoulder because the entire, you got to think, not just the entire sports world, the entire world picked Colorado <laughs> to be Colorado State. And most of us, me included, thought they was going to beat the hell out of Colorado State. They didn't just think they was going to beat them. Like, they won the game. Like, you know, they won the game on Saturday. But they thought they was going to, like, beat them silly. Like, I think the spread was over 20 points. So that part is true. And that, I think, is why you saw so many dirty plays, why you saw so much dirty stuff going on from Colorado State. One, I don't think they were as talented as Colorado. And two, it's because, yo, y'all think y'all better than us. Y'all walk around with chains and have rappers on your sideline in your locker room. Okay, well, we'll show you that in the day, those rappers, they can't protect you on this football field when I can do something dirty to you. That, that I do think, was the mindset. And maybe the mindset by other teams moving forward because of what's taking place at Colorado and especially for the teams that just aren't as talented. 
you know, the Arizona states of the world. Arizona State got beat 29 nothing by to Fresno. Like they're not as talented as Colorado, but at the end of the day, football, unfortunately, you can't take cheap shots, dirty hits, and sometimes it can cost you a Travis Hunter for three weeks. And that's unfortunate. Let's keep listening. By that's watched and really understands sports among young kids. This has been going on for decades. This is true. This part's true. For decades, Dion put oh. a target, a bullseye on his kid's back. With I agree. His bloviating and arrogance. And come on. All of the media. No different than when Jalen Rose went to go play Duke when he was at Michigan. And Chris Weber and Jawan Howard and these guys took the court with an attitude about Duke because all of the media is worshiping Duke and Duke can do no wrong. Mm. And the Duke kids are better than the Michigan kids, better than the UNLV kids, mm. better than everybody. Mm. I've seen black athletes for decades tap into that energy and that. Now he's got a point there. I think he's got a point. I think when you have a big, <clears throat> a big time figure as your head coach who is unapologetic and is all welcoming to all forms of media. I think that that can be there because there's very successful coaches that nobody like cares to hear from. Like Nick Saban is the greatest college football coach ever. We, whether Nick Saban picks up a mic or not, most people don't care. Kirby smarts went back to back national championships. I haven't heard anything from Kirby this year. And he's literally the two time defending national champion. So he's got a point there. That emotion and that animus and that feeling of disrespect. And occasionally they lose their mind and cross and cross the line. That's what Henry Blackburn did. That's what I saw the Colorado State players do. Okay, 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 okay. There's so much there. There is so much there. Oh my goodness, Jason Whitlock. Thank you for some more content, buddy. Uh, because I I think Whitlock. I, I listen to Whitlock. I think Whitlock says a lot, a lot of goofy stuff, like a whole lot of stuff I just don't agree with. But it's at times he makes points that other people in the media don't make that I'm like, hmm, he's got a point there. See, the the braggadocious and the, you know, me, 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 and look at our team and hyping up Shadur, hyping up Travis, that stuff we love as fans, as content creators, as consumers of, of content, all types of stuff. Like, we love that stuff. And coming from a cultural icon like a Deion Sanders, we all love to hear. We all love to see it. But then you got to look at the other side, because at the end of the day, he is a head football coach, meaning he he is the head coach of a team and they have to go out and play other teams. Well, the problem is when you do all of that stuff, if you back it up, it's lit. <laughs> if you back it up, it is lit. It is like the best thing ever. But if you happen to stumble. Like, if you would have stumbled against Colorado State, boy, when it rains, it pours. And Whitlock is starting early. He's just getting ahead of it. He's really just getting ahead of it. Because once Colorado loses, because they're going to lose a game, they're probably going to lose multiple games. These are the type of pieces that you're going to hear. These are the, this is the type of content that you're going to hear. Because for every, you know, there's two sides to every coin. So for every piece of media, that is big enough prime and that is big enough Colorado and that is, you know, big enough everything that they're doing, all the stuff. There is another side creeping, lurking in the cut, lurking in the cut, waiting for them to fall. And boy, if they happen to fall, not just fall, but if they happen to fall hard and, and that just means lose, it just means lose one game. And in football, pretty much everybody loses. Hardly anyone goes undefeated. They are going to come out banging a drum so loud we've never seen. Now, what Whitlock, the point that he does make, the, the great point that he makes at the end, once he starts talking about the race stuff, because that's stupid to me. I, I think that's dumb. I, I don't I just don't agree with that because the dirty hits from Colorado State happened by the white safety, Blackburn, and one of them on Shadur came from the black defensive lineman, who had a great game, by the way, but he had a dirty hit. That's why he got ejected. That is just gonna come with the territory. 
with when you're very braggadocious, when your quarterback wears diamond chains and diamond watches, and when Rick Raw says do the Shadur Sanders, the Shadur Sanders, when you got famous people doing all of that, people put that in their memory bank, and they want to beat the hell out of you. When they get a chance, they want to beat you. And if they can't beat you, or if they think you're just too good, they may take a dirty shot. They may do something illegal and, and, and just take whatever comes with it. You know, Henry Blackburn, when he hit Travis, he was willing to take whatever came with that. That ball literally hit the sideline. He was willing to take whatever came with it. When Kamara drove Shadur into the ground, put all his body weight on him, looked like a play where quarterbacks break their uh, collarbones. You know, the reason why they banned that play, because Romo and Rodgers and all kinds of guys had broken their collarbones, he was willing to take whatever came with that, which included an ejection, and now he'll have to miss the first half of their next game. But that is going to be the mindset of every team Colorado plays. And just every team that is coached by Deion Sanders. It's just the truth. And that can, to Whitlock's point, put a target on your back. See, we didn't see necessarily, and here's the thing. People might get mad at me at saying this. We didn't see a lot of, because because Prime has been this way since he's been a head coach. He was doing the same stuff at Jackson. But the difference between the players and the teams in a, in a conference like the SWAC versus a conference like the Pac-12. See, even though Prime was doing the same stuff, talking the same kind of talk, walking the same kind of walk, there still was a mutual respect between coaches, players on the other team. Like, there were things like Alabama State, obviously the Eddie Robinson Jr. thing happened, but even that wasn't that bad. All he did was just stop Prime from hugging him. It wasn't that bad. And then Prime walked there. He did walk through Alabama State's huddle, right, last year, and a couple of players cursed at him. Still, I mean, that's not good. That's not that bad. They weren't out there driving Shadur into the ground or taking cheap shots on each other because at the, at the HBCU level, for the most part, let me say for the most part, there's like a mutual respect, and those kids still look up to Deion Sanders. And they respected the fact of what he was doing for the conference, for the players, for the teams, all of that stuff. So even though, yeah, they, they weren't feeling some of the stuff he was saying, and when the two teams that did beat him, you know, South Carolina State in the Celebration Bowl and, and North Carolina Central in the Celebration Bowl, you see what their coaches and their players had to say after the game. But during it, they weren't trying to hurt each other. They were just trying to go out there and win. The same's not going to be had in Colorado. The same's not going to be had at the Power Five level because at the Power Five level, they don't care about exposure. All they, they all get exposure. You know, some gets more, some get more exposure than others. But millions of people tune into the games all the time. It don't matter if they're playing Colorado or USC or UCLA. A bunch of people going to tune into the game. A bunch of people going to pull up to the game. You know what I'm saying? Like that's not the same at every SWAC school. That's the same pretty much at all the Power Fives. Now, to the magnitude of a Colorado, oh, now I really got to show out. And just like, you know, those players chose to play for Coach Prime on the other side of the field, those players chose to play for Jay Norville at Colorado, at Colorado State. Or they chose to play for uh, Lanning at Oregon or Lincoln Riley at USC or Chip Kelly at UCLA, et cetera, et cetera. So those players chose to play for their coach too. And they're going to back up their coach, especially if the, they feel like even if their coach says something wild. You know, Norville kind of started it, but at the end of the day, it was up to the players to back him up. And they're like, okay, coach, you recruited us. You love on us. The whole world is picking Colorado. So we're going to have your back, coach. Just like the players of Colorado do the same for Prime. And especially when you're playing teams that you're better than, that you're more talented than, you can put somewhat of a target on your team's back. Now, the thing is, as long as you go out there and handle business, you're going to do what you got to do. You're going to handle business. You're going to beat them in whatever it is what it is. But at the same time, Whitlock does make the point that those teams, each and every single team that Colorado plays, and it's not a bad thing, but each and every single team that Colorado plays, whether they're the favorite like Oregon, I think Oregon's a 20-point favorite this week, or whether they're the underdog, <clears throat> They're all going to feel like the underdog because all the celebrities, all the dignitaries, all the big name, famous people, they're all team prime. <laughs> they're all team prime. The only people rooting for the other team are the fans of that school 
and the parents of the players, <laughs> the wives of the coaches. That's about it because the whole, the rest of the world, just get on Twitter. The rest of the world, the rest of everywhere rooting, is rooting for Colorado. And that can inspire another team. It's not, once again, not a bad thing. And the Bulls, I think, is not necessarily a bad thing. But when you are that braggadocious, it can lead to sometimes players on the other team acting silly, especially if they feel like you may be better than them. And in some of those underdog games against the Arizonas and the Arizona States where they're the underdog, those players may get a message from their coach that leads them to do something that's uncalled for. And I think that may have happened in the Colorado State game. And it almost guaranteed it was almost guaranteed that it happened because even when Jay Norville was asked about the dirty hits, kind of brushed it under the rug. <laughs> he didn't say any kind of disciplinary action or anything was going to happen to any of his players because he probably kind of coached it up without coaching it up. Wink, wink, wink. You know. But this was interesting commentary by Whitlock. Very, very interesting. Leave your thoughts in the comments down below. Leave your thoughts in the comments down below. Once again, my name is Jeff Lighty Jr. This is the Victor Formation Sports Show right here on Jeff Lighty Jr. YouTube, Facebook, wherever you get your content. Do me a favor. Hit that thumbs up button. Like, share, subscribe. Also, you can follow me on Instagram and X at JLighty7, Instagram and Twitter at JLighty7. Thank you guys for tuning in. I'll see you next time. Peace.